One of the biggest flashpoints in East Asia is in the South China Sea. The Chinese claim 90% of the South China Sea as their sovereign territory. We cannot accept that. This is an ongoing, very dangerous situation between the United States and China. And if they are aggressively seeking to intercept U.S. ships or aircraft, then accidents can, can occur. We're dealing with the major arteries for globalization. This is an area of vast maritime trade, uh, both energy but also trade in general. All the nations of this region depend on the sea lines of communication for their economic well-being. These are uh, highways through which enormous volumes of maritime traffic pass. More than a third of global trade goes through the South China Sea. And uh, if China wants to become the dominant player in the region, I think from the perspective of Chinese strategists, it's important for them to be able to control the use of those waters. They see the United States now as having that capacity and that role, and they would like to have it themselves. China has put out a nine-dash line. It's called the cow's tongue because that's the shape that it defines. That covers about 80% of the water and the territory and the land features in the South China Sea, which is shared by a number of other countries, including four other Southeast Asian claimants, and also by Taiwan. And it is one of the most dangerous claims made by any country in the world today, because China is trying to close off the South China Sea. It was originally a Levin Dash line. You have the 1947 created by Chiang Kai-shek's regime, no, uh, was then an 11 dash line. Two of the dashes came off in the 1950s when China and Vietnam agreed on the Gulf of Tonkin and they took those dashes off. It goes almost down to Indonesia. The Chinese want, for instance, the Natuna Islands from Indonesia so far from China that it's almost inconceivable that Beijing could maintain such a claim and yet they do so. Recently, China's added a 10th dash to show that Taiwan is clearly within China it really would make the uh, South China Sea a Chinese lake if those were to be the territorial waters of China. This brings it into conflict with Taiwan, the Philippines, Malaysia, Brunei, Indonesia, Vietnam. It's really a line that the Chinese communists inherited from the Guomindang, Chiang Kai-shek, uh, and they don't want to be less steadfast defenders of Chinese sovereignty than Chiang Kai-shek was. So in a sense, part of the story is they've inherited a line they now have to defend, even though the world's a rather different place. And so right now this nine-dash line is a flashpoint. To claim the South China Sea would be the equivalent of Mexico claiming the Gulf of Mexico not acceptable to the United States, not a, a, acceptable to any of the states around the South China Sea. It is a preposterous claim built on an ancient concept, namely that any area that any previous Chinese d dynasty has touched is by virtue of that Chinese territory. There is the troubling habit of the Chinese to claim that wherever Chinese pottery is found, then in that case, that presumably was once part of Chinese territory. What makes it especially destabilizing is that China has not clarified what it really means. Uh, one possibility is that China might just claim uh, the land features and the adjacent waters inside that line. That would not cover all of the waters in, uh, in the South China Sea or indeed within the Nine Dash Line. But because China has been very vague and ambiguous, it's, it's unclear. And if China were to claim every drop of water within the Nine Dash Line, that would include waters within other countries' EEZs. So when the Chinese suddenly put the map of the Nine Dash Line on every Chinese citizen passport, that was basically a statement to say, this is our sovereign territory in water. Well, if you're in the Philippines and Vietnam, you're saying, well, where's our water? Where's our territory? Um, it's a flagrant, assertive, and provocative action. Mm -hmm.